on my quest to find out if Caden Live truly is the best Linux video editor, the first program that we have is Flowblade. Now, I've been using Flowblade for about two or so weeks at this point, so I've edited about 20 or 30 videos across all three of my channels, and I have a lot of things to say about Flowblade. A lot of them aren't going to be positive, but I do have some positive things to say about this. Honestly, I feel like the person who made Flowblade has never actually edited a video themselves because there's a lot of really weird decisions that have been made that no video editor would ever suggest are a good idea. But I'll try to keep it positive at the start. So this is what Flowblade actually looks like. It has a fairly clean looking interface, which is fairly easy when it doesn't do anywhere near as much as Caden Live, which isn't actually a bad thing because a lot of the features in Caden Live, I've never actually touched. So they keep adding new things for people who are like really professional video editors, but people who are professional video editors don't really use Caden Live. So it's sort of having a bit of an identity crisis and doesn't know what it is. Flowblade, much simpler, does everything I need it to do. It has all of the effects I need. So over on the right hand side here, we have a list of effects. And let's say I wanted to add something like a audio filter. And basically we have the things we'd expect like volume level, pan, things like that. If we go to the audio filters, we have a bunch of extra things like equalizing and distorting and things like that. And a lot of that does come from the fact that this is an MLT video editor. So it kind of gets that stuff for free. As for the timeline, the most important part of a video editor like this, for the most part, it's actually pretty good. So timeline scrubbing is basically instant. I don't know what it is about Caden Live, but when I do something like this, it just freaks out and has to like catch up for a while. But Flowblade, it's basically instant, which is as good as I could ever want it to be. And if it's not instant, because let's say you're editing like 4K clips or something like that, it does have the ability to proxy clips as well. So you could basically convert the clips down to a smaller size during the editing phase. And then when you go to render, it'll use the full quality. And I haven't had to do this, but it is nice to have this here as well. I believe Caden Live does have this feature, which probably would address the problem. But in the case of Flowblade, I, I don't need to touch it and I shouldn't need to touch it with 1080p video. Now off to the left hand side here, we have this tool menu, most of which I never actually touch because Basically, I just splice clips and it's easier just to learn the hotkey to splice rather than switching over to the cut tool and then switching back to the move tool. All I do is I find a place I want to cut, I go and press X, it cuts the clip, I click on it and I press delete. That's pretty much all I need to do. And when I'm working with a single track like this, it's actually really convenient because when you go and delete something, as you saw there, it actually automatically closes the space. Now, closing the space can be a little bit annoying if you're working with multiple tracks at the same time, but typically what I'll do is work with one track, and then once I've done all of my splicing, then I'll go and add extra things, and it's not really that big of a deal at that point. Now, if you do manually add a space, like let's say we have this space right here, and then you go and delete a clip, it won't actually go and close all of that space. It will leave this space here, and it will just close around that space. Now, besides the timeline scrubbing, most of this application just feels really light. So, for whatever reason, Caden Live just lags at any point it can get. So, switching between the different effects, you'll get a bit of a lag. Switching between the different screens that you have, you get a bit of a lag. But Flowblade, it, as the name would suggest, it feels very flowy. It feels very fast. That's probably the biggest thing that I could say about this. This application is really lightweight and is really, really fast. So if you can ignore the problems that I'm going to mention, then I'd say it's pretty good. Now in Caden Live, I would always have at least two tracks. I would have a video track and an audio track. But in this case, I've only got the video track here. And that's because by default, Flowblade will actually merge the video and audio tracks into the exact same track. And then if you want to go and split them out, what you go and do is go to the split audio, and that will actually add that on its own separate track. Now, I think this is kind of a neat idea because if you don't need to cut the audio separately from the video, there's no reason to have the audio on its own separate track. Now, the nice thing is that we can still go and apply audio effects when it is merged into this one mega track here. So let's say we wanna do something like the volume level. If we drop it on this one here, we can still go and modify that. Everything works as you would expect it to. 
The last really cool thing this does is compositing. So let's say that we take this track right here and then put it above this track here. Now, in this case, what's going to happen is we're going to see the track under here until we get to this point here, and then we'll see the track above it. But let's say that we go and add a compositor to it. So let's say that we add something like the Burn compositor. So this will do the exact same thing that Burn would do over in something like GIMP. And as you can see, it's gone and burnt the colors from this one onto the layer below it. Now, obviously, burn isn't something you'd want to use in this case, but you can go and mess with the compositors and see what each of them actually do, and you can get some pretty neat effects actually happening. Generally, the only one you're actually going to be using, though, at least in my case, is going to be the blend compositor, because blend actually lets you use transparency. Now, with these compositors, it may seem like they're attached directly to a clip, and Flowblade seems to think it's like that as well. So if we go and add a compositor to this one right here, Let's say that we add the Blend Compositor. If you go and right click on this, it will give you the option to delete the compositor. But then on the clip below it, it doesn't give you the option there. So you might think that it only applies to this clip. That's not the case at all. If we go and stretch the compositor all the way over here, it actually applies to this clip as well. But once again, you can't actually go and delete the compositor there. And if you go and put this on the layer above, it still doesn't think the compositor is attached to this clip as well. So I would recommend in a future update, just decouple the compositors from the clips entirely because they're already not connected. It's just weird interface choices that make it seem like that. Now, normally when I'm editing my stream clips, I like to go and take the segments that I think are actually important to the clips and then put them on a different track just so I can actually see where they are. Now, typically there's going to be like a bunch of cuts in there and I would like to group them together and then move them to that track. You can't do that here because let's say that we want to go and do some group movement. The way you do group movement basically is you go and select stuff and then you can go and slide it back and forth. You can't go and slide it above though. There's seemingly no way to get it onto the next track up. I've tried a bunch of different hotkeys. No matter what I do, I can only slide it back and forth, which makes group movement significantly less useful. But that's not the end of it. So let's go and select the group again and then press the delete key. That doesn't do anything. For whatever reason, there's no group deletion. Okay, let's apply an effect to the group then. So let's take this effect here and then drop it on the group. And only one of the clips has the effect. So there's no group effects either. And let's see what happens if we just try to undo all of the changes I've done so far. Let's see what state it actually puts us back into. So let's just keep going until it says it's basically done. Okay, so this is me undoing everything. There are no more changes that can be undone. This is what it thinks the file will look like when I first open it up. This is what it actually looked like. So we had a complete timeline, but it completely forgot about that. Now, when I record videos, I record my desktop audio and my microphone audio on two separate tracks so that if I need to say like lower my desktop audio level because I just forgot to turn it down, I can go and do that. I can't do that in Flowblade because Flowblade ignores any track that isn't the first track. And there's no way to go and set your video to be using a different track. So you're basically just stuck using the first audio track, which means it's actually impossible for me to edit the podcast in here because the podcast, my guest is a part of the desktop audio and I have no way to hear them inside of Flowblade. Now I'm going to show you one of the worst design decisions that I have ever seen. So let's go into the edit menu and go to the keyboard shortcuts. So this is the menu where you go and edit all your keyboard shortcuts. Anything that has a cog next to it, you can go and modify. There are things that don't have cogs next to them. Why can't I rebind everything in this menu right here? Why can't I go and rebind these keys right here? Why can't I rebind all of these keys right here? What reason is there for these to be hard coded? I want to go and set them to my own keys. I'm pretty sure it's more work for a developer to make it so some keys can be modified and some can't. Why is it like this? Another kind of annoying thing is there's no indication of what clips are actually inside of your timeline. So when you drag stuff in, it does go and, you know, highlight stuff. But if you just go and click off of that, the highlighting is then gone. And you're back to not actually knowing what's in your timeline. So you actually have to look at the names and be like, okay, that's that one. Is it that one there? No, it's that one there. It's that one there. It's annoying. Just have like an asterisk here or something that just says, hey, this is in the timeline right now. Another kind of annoying thing is the way that it handles titles. So let's just go and make a new title 
And it does go and show like where the text is going to be relative to everything else on the screen, which is really nice to have. I like that feature. But let's go and just save it. It then prompts you for a location to save it. Just save it in the project directory. Where else would I want to save it? And speaking of the project directory, you might have noticed that my recent videos haven't actually had chapters going through the video. And the reason why it's like that is because the way the project file is set up, I don't like it. Why is it like this? Why is it just garbled nonsense? There is like text in here that is legible, and then you have all of this other nonsense. The way that Caden Live does it is just with an XML file. That is very, very easy to pass. I can just use a very simple Python script. There probably is a way to actually go and parse this, but I don't want to put in the effort to go and deal with that. Now, I don't use that many effects in my videos, but problems with effects can still be really, really annoying. So let's go and add a position scale to this one right here. Position scale is basically modifying like how big the video actually is. So let's go into the position scale and modify the size. Now you might think that's modified it for the entire clip. No, no, no. That's not how it works at all because this automatically keyframes for you. So that basically means that from this keyframe right here to this point right here, it will try to like modify the size as the video goes. So I'll just show you what I mean. Basically, it looks like this. And that's how I had that video where I covered an IP address for like a portion of time, but not for the entire video because I accidentally had a keyframe in there that I didn't mean to make. Every other video editor I've looked at applies keyframes when I tell it to apply keyframes. This just does it as a default action. So the only way to apply an effect to an entire clip is either go and delete this keyframe here or make sure you're always at the start of a clip when you apply the effect. Another really annoying thing about working with transforms is because it's in this separate window here, you always have to guess what you're actually setting. So let's just go into the transform. We'll get rid of this keyframe here. So just delete that. And let's say that we want to go and modify the size of this one. So as we can see over on the right hand side, it's showing us where the video is being placed, but we really have to kind of like guess exactly where it's going to be and guess how big the video needs to be. In something like Caden Live, you actually modify the transform inside of the preview window, which makes it much easier to work out where things need to be placed. Now, throughout this video, you may have noticed that the preview window over here has just occasionally flashed black. You might think that's a problem with my recording. Nope, that's actually how it is on my side as well. Whenever you use Flowblade, random actions will just make the preview window flash black for a second, which isn't a major problem, but it does kind of get annoying. Thank you guys for watching, and before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Montezar, Will, Brennan, Chico, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Pitty, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, there's some links down below to my Patreon, subscribe star, leave pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere, and then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.